Welcome to the city of Ibadan, the city where tradition, culture, and modernization meets at a very, very equal level. And today we are going to see the heart or the job of our forefathers, which was blacksmithing. So, so before we all wanted to become doctors, pharmacists, lawyers, and all these fancy, you know, jobs. Our forefathers used to be farmers and warriors. Our Yoruba forefathers, our ancestors, were farmers and warriors. And for this job, they need tools. So farmers need tools, the whole, the cutlass, and the warriors need weapons. The hunters, they need weapons. So this was the job of the blacksmithers in Yoruba land. They make tools weapons for our farmers and our warriors so now let's go into a blacksmithing compound we are going to the alagbede compound in ibadan bere to see this ancient craft now if you cannot stand the heat you have no business here today i am going to bring you into the workshop of a blacksmith the ancestral jobs of our forefathers in Yoruba land. These people had a very, very popular job because their job has to do a lot with the most essential things people needed to farm, which is to get food to eat and to protect themselves, which is security. So I am going to be interviewing this uh, Alagbede, this blacksmith, who spoke mostly in Yoruba language. I will try to let you guys hear him and subtitle some stuff. So let's go right into the video. Ishe Agbede blacksmith is the work of a strong man because you would always be in the heat and you have to use heavy metals to straighten your metals that has been in the fire as you can see already from what this man is doing it is obviously a hard job and someone who has not heating enough cannot do this job this just made me realize how strong and how amazing our african fathers our forefathers were making things out of their own hands without technology without science just man versus his environment so kill me a fish you know you shut up hold me there is a hold me okay you can just run okay come on in here come on to see okay hey sir the blacksmith told us this job has been in his family lineage for decades and is happy to do it with all his heart. And in fact, all of his children has been trained to carry on the legacy. Also, his wife sells the finished products outside. So this is me inside the Agbede studio, <laughs> Agbede workshop. It is really, really hot in here, guys. It is so hot and my respect went 100% for this guy. Yes, are you? Ah. Okay. Oh, okay. 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 Okay so as we were talking the blacksmith quickly told us to please let him remove his iron so that his uh iron wouldn't get burnt and i was fascinated like oh could iron get burnt he said yes like if the fire is too much or he stayed in the fire too much the iron gets burnt and it turned into like liquid like uh what um only looks like that kind of liquid the iron could get burnt and turn into that so they have to be strategic calculative to make sure that the iron doesn't get burnt so they have a lot of tools this is the shizu they use to cut the iron to make shapes they mix the shape 
with their hands as you can see with what is doing themselves and also the chisel the plier they made it by themselves here every uh tools they used to make other tools they said they made it by themselves <laughs> instead of using a hand fan to blow the fire to make it hotter they made this thing they call a weary themselves with um wood and leather and it has hair in it and they just push it up and down to make the fire hotter instead of you know blowing the fire with a fan or something now this is how they make a hole they carve the wood into what they want and they have this iron that they put in fire that they used to make a hole into the wood and attach the metal that is already made onto it <laughs> The last man I talked to told me the challenges of the work and how they are in fear that the work might go in to extinction because the work is really really stressful and is not palatable so therefore they don't really have young men that want to learn about the job because of the stress and also he said as we can see even hide i didn't do anything i was sweating profusely so that's that about that now to religion and agbede a blacksmith in nigeria's yoruba land believes in the god of Hion, which is ogun and this woman brought two dogs that she wanted to sell and immediately i asked them here they said oh they are buying it to make homage and sacrifice to the god of Hion." so i told them are you iron worshippers ogun worshippers uh mainly and i learned an interesting fact and they said he is actually a muslim but because of his job and because of tradition and culture, he keeps making homage to the God of Hayons. <laughs> If you so Another question is this: Jenny Simbai, 
So finally, after the Agbedes make the two, there are other set of people that attach the tools to Andus and that's the final product that gets to the market as you can see these are the final products of the things they made you can see cutlass you can see rigs you can see you know catchers for the animals for hunters you can see the holes and so on and so forth so if you enjoyed this video make sure you give me a thumbs up because you're getting